So I woke up feeling a little bit generous today, and so I thought that instead of giving you one homily, I would give you three homilies. <laughs> but don't worry, they're going to be brief, the three of them, so you're going to be okay. In fact, uh, Deacon Emmanuel was just telling me before Mass, he just came back from Africa, being there a couple of weeks, he was telling me that over there he was going to Mass on Sundays, and the homilies were, going, go, were, were uh, one hour long every Sunday, and the Mass was two, two and a half hours, but I'm not going to do that to you, so you'll, you'll be good, okay? So the three things I want to talk about, just briefly, I want to talk about the Ascension of the Lord, which we celebrate today. Then I want to talk to all of you who are about to receive your first Holy Communion. And then I want to say something about motherhood, being that today is uh, Mother's Day. And there's, there's something Christian and a Christian perspective to think about motherhood. So regarding the Ascension, so we know that the Lord ascended to heaven right after he died. He first resurrected, proved that he was God himself by the fact that he beat death. But after hanging out with the apostles for a little bit, he ascended into heaven. And we know this from all the accounts in the Gospels and the Acts of the Apostles as well. And so when we think about Jesus ascending to uh, the right hand of the Father in heaven, often we can think kind of like, oh, bummer, like Jesus is now further away. He ascended uh, to the right hand of the Father. In a sense, he is not as close. But I would propose to you today that actually that's not necessarily accurate, that maybe in some ways he's actually more accessible to us now thanks to his ascension. After Jesus ascended to heaven, his visible presence passed into his sacraments. And so he's more accessible to us. Now, think about it for a second. Imagine Jesus hadn't ascended to heaven. Imagine he didn't ascend to heaven. So if we wanted to visit him, let's say he was living here in Pflugerville, Texas. This means that the only Catholic church would be this one right here, St. Elizabeth. And anybody who wanted to say hi to Jesus would have to come and travel to Pflugerville, Texas to go hang out with him and say hi to him. And so this church would be even more packed. And you would barely get a chance to talk to him. The line would be so long. You talk to him for like 20 seconds, and he's like, sorry, I got to say hi to the next person, right? Because everybody was going to want to talk to him. But he ascended to heaven and passed his visible presence into the sacraments precisely to make himself more accessible to us. It's one, one of the reasons. And so now, all of you right here uh, who have received First Holy Communion, and you who are going to receive First Holy Communion today, you actually get to have a really close encounter with him which you wouldn't if you hadn't ascended to heaven. Or if you think about the chapel that we have over here that's open 24-7, and he's there in the tabernacle in the Eucharist, anybody of you can come here and visit him and have an, a close encounter with him 24-7, any day of the week, right? Any hour of the day, right? Thanks to the fact that he's passed over his presence to all the sacraments, especially at the Eucharist. So there it is, homily number one. Is that one pretty short? Is that good? All right. Second homily, I want to talk to, to all of y'all who are going to receive your first Holy Communion. Step out here. I'm going to be brave, okay? All right. Yeah, it's, it's much safer over there. Uh, so I, I know I talked to you on Friday when it was your rehearsal, but I want to just review real quick the answers you already gave to me. So uh, who can tell me uh, who it is that you're going to receive today? All right, you. Who are you going to receive today? Jesus, yes, thank you so much. You're going to receive Jesus. Now, you're going to receive him under the appearances of bread. So when you receive Holy Communion, uh, who can tell me, if, is, is it going to taste like bread? Is it going to taste like bread? Oh, it's not going to taste like anything. <laughs> well, is, the, is, the, is the wine going to taste like wine? Yes, okay, great. But is it going to be wine? No, it's not. What is it going to be? The blood of Christ, exactly. And with the bread, it's going to be uh, the body of Christ. Now, what happened is right now over there in that table, we do have bread and wine. But what's going to happen? How is it going to change from being bread and wine to the body and blood of Christ? Yes. Yes, exactly. So she answered correctly. She said that it's going to change from being the body, the, 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 the bread and wine into the body and blood because the priest is going to pray over it. So as I pray over it, it's going to be transformed. Trans, it's going to be transubstantiated, fancy word, and then you'll receive him. Really, really beautiful. Now, when you receive a really special guest into your house, do you go around your house and throw dirt before the guest comes? No. What do you do to your house before the guest comes? You clean the house, right? So you're going to receive Jesus into your heart. And so it's important that you clean the home of your heart. So 
who can tell me a, uh, one way, there's multiple ways, but one way in which you can clean your heart. Confession is one way of cleaning your heart and preparing your heart to receive. What would be another way? Oh, I can't hear. Well, yeah, even taking the blood of, blood and blood of Christ is one way. What's another way? Prayer, yes, prayer. So it's important that every week, every day, actually, as you prepare for Sunday, you're praying every day, that you pray before you go to bed, that you pray in the morning precisely to prepare your heart. Because now, it's not only about receiving Jesus today, but you're going to be receiving Him every Sunday now. And it's important that your heart is always prepared. You can prepare your heart by going to confession or by praying. Now, just to finish uh, this uh, second homily, uh, I want you to know that I know maybe you're a little bit excited to receive his cold communion, but Jesus, Jesus is even more excited than you that you're about to make your first Holy Communion. He's very excited that he's going to be so close to you and that he's going to come into your heart. So know that it's not only you who is excited, but Jesus can't wait to, to be received by you today and can't wait for you to receive him every Sunday from now on because he wishes to be so close to you uh, because uh, he loves you so much. All right, so now to the, 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 third, the third part. I just want to just talk briefly about uh, motherhood. So there's this image that St. Paul has uh, in the letter to the Corinthians where he talks about the body. And he says that the body has many members and that every member is important for the body. So if you think about the, foot, the feet, the feet are important for walking. The hands are important for, you know, taking things I in order to see. And that each member of a body is important, right? And then he makes that analogy with the church. Then in the church, there's many members. All of you are members of the church and each one of you is important in a particular way. God made you in, in a unique way. And you're a gift to the church and to the world, and you have something to give to the church that nobody else can because of the particular way in which he made you. Just to quote you briefly from that letter, St. Paul says, The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Or the, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body which seem to be weaker are indispensable, right? Even the small parts of the body are indispensable, important. So uh, whether you're old or, or, or young or, or whatever gifts you have, you're so important to the church. There's a particular gift that I think is given to the church, and this is the gift of motherhood. Motherhood is a gift for the church and for the world. Motherhood has to do with forming persons, whether it be in the womb biologically, or through our relationship with somebody in a spiritual way, right? Forming somebody and humanly or spiritually. My mom, it's my mom because she conceived me in her womb. Yes, she gave birth to me, but I didn't stop there. After she gave birth to me, in a sense, the work kind of just barely started. Now she had to put up with me, right? And through her relationship with me, she continued to mother me, right? She first fed me with her own body, and then she fed me with her heart. Through love, she for formed me. She nurtured me into uh, uh, the person that I am. So motherhood has to do with this, with the forming of persons. And it is at the core of the flourishing of the church and of society. I do often get the impression, and you can tell me if you think that I'm wrong, but that our society seems to look up as heroes, people that are really not as important to society. Maybe you can think of Mr. Elon Musk, you know, as great as he is and all he's doing for the world in a sense, uh, with maybe taking us, to, taking us to Mars, and I'm sure he's a genius and I, I respect him for all that, very admirable in some ways. But what he's doing, when you think in light of eternity, actually does not matter at all. What we look up to him for, it, it really doesn't matter when you think with, with the eyes of, of, of eternity. Uh, if the world ends, right, it, or we don't make it to Mars, it's going to be okay. Right? The hidden work of motherhood is actually much more important. And think about any other, you know, quote unquote, hero that we have today. Jeff Bezos being the most, you know, being able to have logistics to have packages delivered like the day off, or Taylor Swift being able to be, you know, such a successful artist, whatever that is that, 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 that means, right? What we admire them for is not greater than what mothers do. 
and nor is it as important. Not at all. It pales in comparison. So if you're a mother, whether biologically or spiritually, I want to just take this opportunity to thank you uh, for your motherhood. Your motherhood is a gift. It is a gift to those around you, and it is a gift to the church. Maybe there's a reason why we talk about the Blessed Virgin Mary so much and why Jesus uh, uh, gave her to us. Because we all need a, a mother. Uh, we all need to receive uh, from motherhood.